but I want I want to talk about something I've been I've been involved with. I I look at the last what six months of my life as just being a time of incredible blessing. Uh, I was approached about doing a Bible project that basically is a Bible that has a daily re- Bible reading plan embedded in it, and then at the end of every daily reading, uh, I do a devotional. So I have to read through that area, pick out what I want to write on, and write a devotional. So the whole Bible from yeah. beginning to end. So I'm now in Ezekiel. Okay. And th- th- there's been some things that have just been incredible to me. One, I, I keep uh, hearing in my mind uh, the Apostle Paul's words in Second Timothy that all Scripture is profitable. Mm-hmm. It's been amazing to me in places where people would say, there's just nothing here. i, I got to plow my way through this. There's these unbelievable nuggets of God's grace um, that it, it's just incredible. It just reminded me there's there are no uh, useless, needless passages in the Word of God. There's that's no good. fluff yeah. uh, there. Another thing that's really hit me is the zeal that God has to make himself known. I mean, he is he is sticking himself in every account because he wants us to know. He wants to know that he exists and this is his character and this is what's important to him and this is how he works. And that's repeated over and over again because we're easily distractible and dull of heart and mind. And uh, it's just been such a beautiful thing to see. So can you give me an example of something that that maybe on the surface people wouldn't be able to see God breaking through, but you've been able to discover that and kind of flesh it out, write it? Yeah, I, uh, I'll give an example. Uh, the end of Jeremiah is just a series of God's judgments on the nations. And there's about 10 nations he just turns to and says, you're done, and you're done, and you're done. And I'm, through the end of it, I'm, I'm in tears. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking, what awesome power yeah. that he can just look at an entire nation and say, by my will, it's over. Yeah. And it's repeat. It's chapter after chapter. And uh, why would I be a- afraid yeah. of a human leader? Why would I think that human political power is where I'm going to find my hope? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there, there is a king of kings. Mm-hmm. And... And every ruler only exists by his will. Yeah. And when he's done, he's done. Mm-hmm. And he has the power and authority to say it's over. It's just been... Now, I think you would read through those chapters, and you may not stand back and say, what is being revealed about God in this moment? Mm-hmm. The awesome, incalculable authority of God is just mind-boggling. Yeah. Uh, so that's been, that's been fun. I, I think... Uh, the other thing that's one of the other things that's hit me is, you know, the, the Old Testament, probably more than the New Testament, is marked by the sternest and scariest warnings mm-hmm. of God's judgment. I mean, they send chills down your spine. Mm-hmm. And people may read those and think, how could these words ever come out of a God of love? These words come out of him because he is a God of love. Mm -hmm. Because we have such an ability to minimize our sin. It's it's like a father who loves his son. He's standing in front of him and says, I want you to pay attention to me. Don't you ever do that. Mm -hmm. Because if you do, this is what daddy's going to have to do. Now, you don't do that because you despise your son. Because you love him. You do that because he's precious to you. Mm -hmm. And... Then those warnings are recorded for us. First, they're an example of how precious God's people were to him, but they're recorded for us so that we would hear those warnings because we're precious to him uh, as well. That's beautiful. 